Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Master. In this video, we are going to discuss about SP34 Concrete Reinforcement and Detailing Code. Specifically, we are going to discuss about Section 6 that is for Foundation Detailing. This video is the part 3 of this series. If you wanted to check the part 1 and part 2 to know more details about SP34 Code, I will give you the link in the description box. You can check that one. So now let's move on to Foundation Reinforcement Detailing. First, let's start with type of foundations. As we know, we have many types of foundations like individual column footing that is called isolated footing and combined footing we have strip footing, raft foundation and pile foundation. So all types of foundations are given in SP34. If you wanted to know the details about the different types of foundations, you can read this one or else even I have posted one video about the different types of foundation. I'll give you the link in the description box. Even that also you can check. Next one is cover. So before getting into detail of this cover to the foundation, we should know what is the cover, we should know what is cover and why we are providing cover and where exactly we need to provide the cover. We have the footing section here. If you look into this, cover is to be provided in between the reinforcement and the concrete. So this is the concrete phase of footing and this is the reinforcement. So cover needs to be provided in this space. That is why we have provided the space over here. So cover is provided in order to resist the reinforcement from corrosion. If we don't provide the cover due to environmental effects and if the concrete surface is exposed to moisture, then that may lead to corrosion of steel reinforcement bar. And also the cover provide the fire resistance to the reinforced steel. Cover needs to be provided to the outermost reinforced bar. Now let's look into the cover which is given in class 6.2. The minimum thickness of cover to the main reinforcement shall not be less than 50 mm for surfaces in contact with earth face and not less than 40 mm for external exposed face. Where the concrete is direct contact with the soil, for example, leveling course of lean concrete is not used at the bottom of footing. So this means the PCC. We provide plain cement concrete that is the leveling course before laying the footing concrete. So if that is not provided at the bottom of the footing, in that case we have to go for a cover of 75 mm. This you have to notify clearly if the leveling course that is PCC is not provided, in that case we have to go for the cover of 75 mm. Even in case of raft foundation, whether resting directly on soil or on lean concrete. In case of raft foundation, even though if it is resting on the lean concrete that is PCC, cover for the reinforcement shall not be less than 75 mm. Next, minimum reinforcement and bar diameter. The minimum reinforcement according to slab and beam element as appropriate should be followed unless otherwise specified. So the diameter of main reinforcing bar shall not be less than 10 mm. So we need to follow the slab and beam elements for the minimum reinforcement like percentage and all. The diameter of the main reinforcing bar shall not be less than 10 mm. Minimum 10 mm dia bar we have to use. As per slab, the minimum percentage we have to use is 0.12 percentage as the minimum reinforcement for the HYSD bar. If we use mild steel bar, 0.15 percentage is the minimum reinforcement. Next, detailing methods. Foundation should be normally detailed di diagrammatically in plan and elevation. That means we have to provide the plan and section of the footing. Whether it is an individual footing that is isolated footing or combined footing, any type of footing we need to represent in the form of plan and section. Let's look into the individual footing reinforcement details that is given in figure 6.1. Individual footings are generally square and support a central column. Rectangular footings can be used when the space is restricted in one direction. Individual footings of circular and other shapes can also be be used. Figure 6.1 shows the typical details of a column footing. It is a square column and square footing. So if you look into this, this is the plan and this is the section. As we have discussed before, we have to represent the footing details in terms of plan as well as section. So in plan, we have to represent the column and if we have a pedestal, that also 
needs to be provided in the plan and then footing reinforcement bars if you look into this this is the reinforcement and this side this is the reinforcement so bar details of this along this line needs to be mentioned over here that means die of the bar and then spacing of the bar has to be mentioned here similarly this bar diameter and spacing needs to be mentioned over here and even we can mark the size of the footing in addition to this even we can provide the excavation size also like for example if we provide the pcc as 3 inches or 4 inches that offset also we can show along with this plan next let's look into the section in section in section if you see this is the natural ground level from natural ground level foundation depth is given since it is a sloped footing sloped isolated footing the minimum depth we need to provide here as 150 mm 150 mm minimum we need to provide and then maximum according to the design this is the reinforcement and if you look into this column bars the column bars development length needs to be provided this is the development length for the column bar concrete cover as we have discussed bottom it is 50 mm and side cover if you see here 75 mm has been provided see this extension bar extension minimum 300 mm needs to be provided these all details has to be provided in the section of the footing to achieve economy the footings are sloped or stepped towards the edge satisfying the requirements for bending and punching shear so individual footings can be provided as a sloped footing or stepped footing instead of providing the overall depth for example if you are having the depth of footing as 600 mm according to the punching shear we have to decide the depth of the footing so we have the depth as 600 mm so in order to provide the overall depth of the footing as 600 mm we can make it as a sloped footing or stepped footing to achieve the economy in sloped footing, the slope is generally restricted such that top form work is not called for in construction. The thickness at the edge shall not be less than 15 cm for footings on soil. In the section, it was provided the edge of the thickness as 150 mm that is 15 cm nor less than 30 cm above top of files in case of footing on files. Next, combined footings. Combined footing we have to use where the external columns of the structure are close to the the boundary of an existing structure and also where the footings of individual columns overlap with each other so in such cases we need to use combined footings the detailing requirements as specified in section 4 for slabs and beams shall be followed as appropriate so the same detailing requirement we have to follow next column on edge footing to prevent shear failure along the inclined plane that is corbel failure in footing where a column is located on the edge in most of the cases we will be getting this kind of edge columns so if the column is placed on the edge of the footing it is advisable to provide a horizontal u-type bars around the vertical starter bars let's look into figure 6.3 this is 6.3 column on edge of a footing so in that case we need to provide a u-type bar see here you can see the u-type bars so these bar needs to be provided if the column is placed on the edge of the footing let's look into the combined footing reinforcement combined column footing so if you see here in the elevation see two columns are there and the reinforcement needs to be provided like this top bar and the bottom bar and this this is the uh, stirrup links if the depth of the footing is more we have to provide the stirrup bars and in figure 6.4 we have typical details of combined footing this is plan of top steel that is top bar and here plan of bottom steel we have in section if you look into it so this is the depth of the footing okay concrete cover needs to be provided and in this section if you see this is your bottom reinforcement and this is your top reinforcement so in bottom also we provide reinforcement along both the axis and in top also we provide reinforcement along both the axis next wrap foundation wrap foundation unit continuous in two directions covering an area equal to or greater than the base area of the building if the wrap consists of several parts with varying loads and height it is advisable to design the raft with expansion joint between these part joint shall also be provided wherever there is a change in the direction of the raft and should be detailed on the drawing so we provide draft foundation in case 
the soil bearing capacity is very low and if the load which is coming on the foundation is in that case we go for a raft foundation so if we provide the raft foundation if it has several part with varying loads and height we have to design the raft with expansion joint and also we need to provide the joints wherever the direction of the raft is changing the minimum reinforcement in either direction shall not be less than 0.15% of the gross sectional area for mild strain rain and 0.12% in case of high strength deformed bar so we need to detail the longitudinal and transverse bar generally in accordance with the rules for slab and beam except cover and bar supports while detailing the rain enforcement in raft foundation the construction method and sequence of construction are to be specified which should include the position of construction joint position of movement joint and position of water bar joint the location of flap splices in raft should be detailed with care next placing of bar support where top reinforcement is required consideration should be given to the method of supporting with chair and edge u bar the suggested spacing of support is 30 times the diameter of the supporting bar using chairs having the diameter at least 12 mm so the diameter of chair should be such that they do not bend or buckle under the weight of reinforcement and other incidental load during construction this needs to be followed when we provide the chairs we have to use the diameter of at least 12 mm and ensure that chair should not bend or buckle under the weight of the reinforcement next duct and trenches where duct and trenches occur in raft special attention should be given to detailing continuity of top reinforcement especially where moment transfer is required so let's look into figure 6.6 so in figure 6.6 we have typical details around a trench in raft foundation so when the trench is present we have to detail like this see the bar needs to be bent like this and development length ld needs to be provided and again this bar extra bar needs to be provided for such distance of ld and again this side the bar needs to be bent in this way and then this development lens need to be provided let's look into the combined footing reinforcement detail the individual footing for these two columns will overlap each other so that's why we need to provide the combined footing this is the plan of the combined footing see in the plan we have to represents the reinforcement detail in the shorter direction as well as in the longer direction in combined footing we provide a mat kind of reinforcement on top layer as well as the bottom layer. so the reinforcement bars has been mentioned in the plan as well as the details if you look into this this is the bar and the reinforcement detail is given here 16 at 6 inches center to center 16 is the dia of the bar 6 inches is the spacing and if you check this one this is the bar and the detail is here 16 at 8 inches center to center similarly if you look into this direction we have the bar as well as the details let's look into the section we have cut the section over so the section looks like this this is the pcc lean concrete and we have to provide the bottom cover as well as the side cover this is the reinforcement that is 16 mm dia at 5 inches center to center in the plan this is the bottom reinforcement see the indication is like this and this is the top reinforcement this is the bottom bottom reinforcement and if you look into this this is the reinforcement which needs to be provided at bottom top don't get confused over here so this is the bottom layer of the reinforcement on top of it this will come if you look into this two so these two indications represents the bottom bars how we provide the reinforcement over here the most bottom layer that is 16 at 5 inches center to center so the bottom layer is 16 at 5 inches center to center and uh, this lay this one is 16 at 6 inches center to center so this is bottom bottom and this is bottom top similarly this is top top reinforcement and this is top bottom layer of reinforcement so next uh, if we select this one and this one see so this reinforcement detail is 16 at 8 inches center to center and uh, this also we have 16 dia at 8 inches center to center both have same spacing 16 at 8 inches center to center and again this one 
one is 16 and 8 inches and 2 cent. So in this way you have to provide the reinforcement details for the combined footing. Next uh, let's look into the raft footing details. If we have more than two number of columns that also we call it as raft footing that looks similar to the combined footing only. The reinforcement details and all similar to the combined footing only. See if you look into this we have two layer of reinforcement both top and bottom. This is one type of raft footing and one more raft footing is like this. So overall we are providing the raft foundation. We have to provide the bottom reinforcement as well as top reinforcement. It is uh, like a mat. Bottom mat and top mat we have to provide. This is bottom reinforcement layout and this one is top reinforcement layout. As we have seen in the SP34 we need to provide the proper construction joint detail. As in raft footing we have the level difference you look into this we have the level difference and according to this we need to provide the proper joint details so it is mandatory to follow the sp34 guidelines to provide proper detailing of the foundation so friends i hope this video was useful to you do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome and if you really like the content hit the like button also share it with your friends and if you want more videos like this like uh, slab detailing beam detailing and all please do comment in the comment box so that i'll prepare a separate video for that and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching